Good, hey, good morning, morning, Westmore. All of you watching, uh, whether here in person or online, yeah. so glad to have you this morning. It's We're a beautiful morning. I got to wear my Westmore yep. hoodie again, which I love so much. Won't be much longer. It'll be too warm to wear Pollen it. Pollen is high. Pollen count is up. Temperature is low, but it looks pretty outside. It's very beautiful, <laughs> and we are glad to have you here with yeah, us. Yeah, we're so glad you're here. And if you're watching online, like so many of you do, literally, Rob, it's awesome. We see the all reports over the world. All, all over the world. Over the world. Yeah. And we really sincerely appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, every week as a staff, we come together. We talk specifically about all of you yeah. who watch online and who can't be here because maybe you live in another part of the country yeah. or for some other reason. But we're so glad that you are here if you're watching online. So thank you for joining yeah. us. Like always, tell us where you're watching from. Like, share, comment, interact with us yeah. during the service. We love to hear from you guys. Yeah, yeah. And if you have prayer needs, go ahead and put those in the comments as well. Or you can message the page. We have groups that meet all throughout the week. And we have our staff we meet weekly. And we pray for those needs. If you are new to the Westmore family or you've never filled out a physical connect card and you're here today, scan the QR code in the chair in front of you and go turn that into the uh, information desk right afterwards. And we've got a gift specifically for you. If you're here, you're new. Man, we're glad you're part of the Westmore family. And you should know when you fill out those connect cards, number one, we're not going to spam you. No, uh, we the main reason we want to get those is so that we can connect with you yeah. every single week when our staff comes together and it's the entire sometimes it's the pastoral staff yeah. sometimes the entire staff we read every single card that's filled out as a group together pastor vera does that so we can get to know who you yeah. are what your interests are and a way to connect yeah. you so uh please so fill those important. out so important that you're Rob, to your last family. week was unbelievable Man. all week long a holy week yeah. all of the activities yeah. it was a lot the of choir fun. the orchestra the talent of the church is so amazing yeah. we are so blessed uh, Pastor Steve, they put together an amazing program. Pastor yeah. Kelvin preached an incredible sermon. Yep. And we just want to say thank you for everybody who helped yeah. make that happen. All the, the extra hours that went in behind sure. the scenes and rehearsals and preparation. Yeah. Thank you. And I know special thanks to our volunteers, right? Yeah. We, I mean, our volunteers, we could not have pulled off Holy Week and all of the activities that took place from our Palm Sunday service, we'll have our kids volunteers for that Sunday, from our worship service on the Greenway with the West and the student ministries departments, um, with our Easter egg hunt with the kids, with our glow in the dark egg hunt. Man, we had Good Friday, Easter Sunday, we had so many things going on last week and we could not have pulled that off yeah. without our incredible volunteer base here at Westmore. So if you're a part of our volunteer teams, any of our teams, we want to tell you thank you so much. We could not pull off really any Sunday, any Wednesday, on any youth event, any church event, especially Holy Weeks, we could not pull that off without you. Well, so thank you it, so much. It's a great point, Rob. And I just do want to say that if you are looking for a place to yeah. serve, please seek out Pastor Ginger yeah. or really any of the pastoral staff. Yeah. Uh, but Pastor Ginger does such a great job coordinating so many areas of, of volunteerism. Yeah. Well, we're uh, always trying to build our teams. Always trying always to build, trying our, to build our, teams. our teams. Whether it's media, we'd love to have you behind the camera upstairs or is helping out student yep. ministries every Sunday morning and kids ministries. Yeah. There are places for you to serve. Westmore's if you want better to. when you're a part of a team. It's part of building the yeah. community and the family. So let us know how we can get connected with you to serve, yeah. and we will appreciate that. Also, yeah. Rob, life groups, talking about being connected. Man. If you're not familiar with our life groups, a lot we of have fun. everything going on year-round. <laughs> we have Yarnspiration. I'm trying to join that one, but they won't let me. Galatians, the journey through yep. uh, Galatians. We have Growing in Grace. Yep. We have the Caveman Club on yep. Wednesday nights, which is our men's ministry. There is something for, for everybody. everybody. Pickleball, at bowling. Yep. Uh, there's got to be something there, else. There is always, if you have an activity, if you like doing something, Westmore is a place to get involved because there is really something for everybody here Go in Westmore. Go to the website. Please do. And you can see all about those classes and register Because there's you need no to. way that we could uh, name off everyone because no, we really too many. have so many classes for everybody. Talk about students this Man, summer. There are a lot of fun things going on with our student ministries this summer. We've got youth camps in June and we've got a summer uh, ministry program we do every summer with high school ministry. We do a mission trip to New York City. Um, that's a really fun trip. I know the Guyton girls went with us They've last year. Yeah. Uh, we, man, it is an incredible time from youth camps to mission trips. The summer is a great time to get involved with Westmore um, and West, Westmore students. So if you're interested in more information on how to get signed up 
for Church of God Youth Camp this summer, find me, find Pastor Beck, our middle school pastor. If you're interested in signing up for our New York City missions trip, which you really want to go to because it's so much fun, find me after service because we definitely want to get you signed up because those are limited spots for that. Hey, we are about five seconds away from service starting. So let's all stand and let's get ready to worship Jesus together. God bless you. Love y'all. Hey, good morning. Yeah, let's all stand together. Why don't you turn and smile at somebody? It's good to see you today. Here we go.
right now. Call on the name of Jesus. 
Let him touch you right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We call on the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus, our healer. Jesus, our provider. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, just worship him. Just take a moment. Just enter in and love Jesus right now. There is none like you, Jesus. You can change everything, everything, everything. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're in this room right now. I feel your presence, Lord. I feel your presence, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. Lord, there are lives that need your touch today. There are those that need a healing touch from you, Jesus. There are those that are struggling with fear today. God, calm their storms. Holy Spirit, calm their storms. the praises of his people as you begin to just praise him and honor him singing worthy is the lamb let him touch you today open your hearts to Jesus today he's in this room just open yourself to him say father here I am you know what I need you know what I long for you are worthy oh God you are worthy O oh Lord to receive all the glory and all the praise no matter how I feel no matter what I'm going through I honor you and I praise you Jesus lift up holy hands worthy is the Word. 
Corinthians 2, verses 8 through 10 says this, being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. For this reason also God highly exalted him and bestowed on him a name which is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow of those who are in heaven and those who are under the earth. Jesus' name is worthy. I don't know what you're facing this morning, but what I know is this, is that the name of Jesus, every knee that's in heaven and below the earth has to bow. Let's pray. Jesus, we love you. And Jesus, you are worthy, not because of what you're going to do for me, but because of what you did for me on Calvary, God. You are worthy. It's at your name that everything changes, Jesus. Jesus, you are worthy and you're holy and you're good and you're righteous and you're beautiful and you're strong. God, you are worthy of it all. Father, we love you and we praise you. God, we speak life over Donnie Osman. God, over Lenny Lamagna, over Paul Duncan over Betty Wilson, over Herb Lackey, over Matt and Tina. God, we have needs that only you can fix, needs that only you can touch, needs that only you can heal. And at the name of Jesus, we're believing for wholeness. And we're believing for healing. But God, even if you don't, worthy is your name. God, you're good and you're holy. God, we speak life. And we praise your name. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen, amen, amen. You can be seated. Good morning, Westmore family. Welcome to church. Welcome back. We're glad you're here. If you are joining online, welcome. We're so glad you decided to join us. Be sure you share the service and let us know where you're watching from. And if you have any prayer needs, message the page because we pray together. Multiple groups meet weekly and pray for those needs. And as a staff, we pray together weekly. Um, share the service. We have focus groups tonight at 6 o'clock. Be sure you are here for focus. It's going to be great. And dinner in the commons is this Wednesday night. You want to do that. Reserve a spot online. I know Raj and the team appreciates that. And we have our guest dinner uh, next Sunday immediately after service. So be sure you sign up for that. If you're new to the Westmore family or you've never attended a guest dinner, sign up and uh, join us for that next week. It's going to be great. I know they always bring in really, really incredible food. I'm no longer a guest. Um, so I'm not welcome to those as much as I used to be when I first started coming to Westmore, but I'm, I'm, I like to sneak in sometimes and get the incredible lunch that we have at a guest dinner. So be sure you sign up for that. Luke 6, verse 38 says this, give and it will be given to you. They will pour into your lap a good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over for by your standard of measure, it will be measured to you in return. I'm not gonna preach a full sermon on giving. What I know is this, you know giving is important. When we give, we're blessed by God. And when we give, we get to bless others through our giving. So let me encourage you, if you're not a giver, become one. When I started giving, my life was forever changed. So let me encourage you, set yourself up to be blessed by God and become a giver. Let's pray. Jesus, we love you. Thank you so much for being who you are. God, bless those who give. God, and use the tithe, use the offering, use everything that's given for your kingdom to do exactly what you want. We love you and we praise your name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
there's only one way to the Father. One love that melts the heart of stone. He is the life and resurrection. And all praise belongs to him alone. We look to See the Son of God, the Savior crucified. See the crown of thorns, the nails, his wounded side. He is worthy, I look to the Lamb. See the one who is forever.
The Bible says in Revelation that the four and twenty elders are continuously nonstop bowing and crying out, Worthy is the Lamb. We can get a little tired after a few songs. But to know that right now God's got a God's got some praise going on. And it's absolutely nonstop. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Three times they stand back up and they go through the same repetition over and over and over again. God's creation was designed to praise Him. To praise Him. I don't know how long it's been since words of praise were uttered from your mouth, from a heart that's grateful and thankful, or how long it's been since you've expressed yourself unto the Lord in a way that said, God, I'm so thankful and I praise your name for what you've done for me. Could, could we stand without you feeling pushed or prodded? Could you find a way right now to let the Lord hear some praise words from you? Could you talk to him, not me, not to the stage, but could you tell him something good right now and praise his holy name? Utter some words of praise. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. We thank you. We honor you. We bless your holy name. We lift you up today. You are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Worthy is the lamb. If you can't say anything else, say that. Worthy is the lamb. Worthy is the lamb. Worthy is the lamb. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, can we give him the biggest praise of the day? Let's praise him. Come on. Let's praise him. Some of you are probably saying, what in the world is wrong with pastor's voice? I preached every night this past week. No, no, I didn't. I'm kidding. I had a bout with a whatever it was, I won't even label it, but uh, got a shot over the weekend from the medical field. That didn't feel good, I'm just telling you. And um, they felt like I could go this go today, and so I didn't call anybody, and I got up this morning and I thought, I'm not sure, and I didn't want Ginger or, or Justin or Mark Walker to panic, so here I am. And uh, you've got me, right? So you can overlook a weak voice today and we're going to bring you a word and I'm going to uh, forget the outline that I sent into the media. I'm going to talk to you about something from my heart and uh, talk about the transition following resurrection. The Lord is good, isn't he? I said the Lord is good. I've been told that Matt Cornett, the pastor of Princeton Church of God out of Eastern North Carolina is somewhere here. I don't know where he's at in the family room this morning, but we're glad that Matt and his beautiful wife, Karen, I'd assume Karen's with him. He looks a lot better when Karen's with him. I'll tell you that right now. And uh, we love him. And there he is. And uh, we've also got with us today, Brad and Nancy Gardner and Nancy's wonderful son, Jonathan. They go, they're a blast from the past. We go back to the Denver days. We got a chance to meet with them yesterday and we love them and so honored to have them in the family room today. And then we've also got Sid and Rhonda Cross who are doing the ministerial internship program shadowing today. So they're shadowing a horse pastor and we're going to have a good day and good time together. Could you let them all know that we love them and welcome them. Amen. Last week, we, uh, incredible day. Um, by far, we had the greatest attendance we've ever had. It's not all about attendance, but we had a tremendous outreach between a couple of services, Friday night and Sunday. Uh, it was almost overwhelming. But the most beautiful thing was between our children, starting on Palm Sunday through Sunday morning, 
It's calculated we had around 40 souls find Jesus Christ as a personal Lord and Savior. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we celebrate that big, right? It's the greatest miracle that could ever be performed in the life of an individual to be guaranteed eternal life. What a beautiful, beautiful thing. And so we're thankful for that. And, uh, but we must know that Easter's impact lives on. Sunday, every Sunday, should always be about resurrection reminders. Resurrection reminders. It always should live on. In fact, I'll go ahead and say this, every day is an opportunity for resurrection to be manifested in your life. For whatever you did yesterday, the Lord is able to move you into the future and say, I'm forgetting those things which are behind. I'm pressing toward the mark, the prize of my high calling. That's the power of resurrection. Can we give him big praise for that today? Yeah, amen. Every day is about resurrection. So because of resurrection, I think there's six things I wanna briefly, very briefly drop with you this morning. It's pulled from Philippians chapter four, verses four through seven. It says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known unto all, for the Lord is at hand. Be anxious for, did you get that? Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer, mingled together with thanksgiving and supplication, give thanks unto God. And the God of peace, which passes all understanding, will guard your heart and guard your mind through who? A resurrected Lord, through who? Christ Jesus. Do you believe that today? Then he gives this long litany list. Whatsoever things are good, lovely, good report, honest, just, it's a list. Think on those lovely things. Some of us need to correct our thinking today. We need to get a hold of our thinking because there's a God that has resurrected for you and he wants you to have a transition in your life to where you can live in victory and not under condemnation, amen? So Lord, make it easy to speak, strengthen the voice in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Six things we must do because of resurrection. I find it interesting that this is one of the most positive, I think the most positive book in all of the Bible. Paul, writing from prison, had such a way of being positive. Many of us have a hard time being positive when we go through just a little bit of problems. But he found a way to be positive. You find things in Philippians such as chapter three where he says rejoice in the Lord. You get to chapter four and you find all kinds of positive things like rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. You find him in verse 13 saying I can do all things through Christ. Christ. I need your help this morning. Who strengthens me. You get down to verse 19 and he says but my God shall supply all of my needs according to his through Christ. Through Christ Jesus. So, what we're told here in verse 7, excuse me, verse 4, he says, rejoice in the Lord always. Does anybody find that challenging? Because of resurrection, because of resurrection, we can rejoice in the Lord always. Do you believe that? If there was no resurrection, it wouldn't be possible. But because of resurrection, we can rejoice in the Lord always, always. You know, it's hard to believe, but this word rejoice means to joy, to practice joy, to practice joy. There's a difference between happiness and joy. Happiness can be rather fleeting, can it not? Debbie and I can have a disagreement and happiness goes out the back door in a heartbeat. I'm just being honest. (laughs) Joy can leave. All it takes is that scowl looking at me and happiness flees. 
nervousness sets in. <laughs> Happiness can come and go. Happiness is an emotion. To joy is a choice. To joy is to seize the promises of God and understand that no matter how happy I am or no matter how bad the circumstances are, I still can trust the fact that the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. I still can trust the fact that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I still can trust the fact that we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. I still can trust the fact that I can do all things through Christ whom strengthens me. I still can trust the fact that he'll supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. I stand on the promises and I practice joy. Can we give the Lord praise for that? He's, he's a big God and we can joy. So we practice praise. We practice praise because of his resurrection. If you're taking notes, secondly, not only do we practice praise, we pursue his presence. Rejoice in the Lord always. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. It bears repeating, he says. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men for why? Because the Lord is at. Did you get that? So when Steve said earlier in the service, the Lord's in this place, the scripture backs that up. The Lord is at hand. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is wherever you are. You carry the Lord's presence. He is in you and with you. So we pursue his presence. We acknowledge his presence. We know that his presence is with us only because of the resurrection. There'd be no Lord at hand if there was no resurrection. The Lord is at hand. So we practice praise, we pursue his presence, and we push back anxiety. Some of us really need to get a hold of this one. Be anxious for... There's people in this room that got real anxious this morning. It's not meant to be condemning. It's just a fact. We can get anxious over the most little things. Anxious. Anxiety sets in. We feel emotions of anger and frustration. Those are usually lower levels of anxiety, but pushed to a limit, anxiety can become a real problem. The scripture says that that's not of the Lord. We are to have confidence that Jesus Christ is alive, that he has my life in control, that he is completely all-powerful, and that he can do something about my worrying and fretting. I'm told not to worry about tomorrow because the Lord has got me. If he takes care of the birds of the air and the lilies in the field, how much more is he going to take care of you and I? Can we give him big praise for that? He is taking care of us. He's taking care of us. So we must push back on anxiety. You ever talk to yourself? I have. Don't look at me that way. I've had to say, stop it. Stop it. I like the way David said, be still, my soul. Be quiet, be still. Calm down. Relax. Because the presence of the Lord is with me. And when you do that, you'll begin to fill up more with more of his presence and less of yourself. And you'll find a peace that passes all understanding will calm your heart and soul. We practice praise because he's resurrected. We pursue his presence. We push back anxiety. And then we pray. Notice what he says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice, let your gentleness or moderation be known unto all men, for the Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication. And then he says, in everything, in everything through prayer, and supplication, in other words, earnest prayer, seeking him in the deep places with prayer and supplication, mingled together with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is the gate to enter into his presence in a more powerful way because we're thankful that God can take care of our problems. We're thankful that he can handle this mess that I'm in. We're thankful that he'll be able to see me through. And so we find ourselves praying, 
Because of resurrection, you get to pray. Because of resurrection, you can go to the Father through the Son. Because of the resurrection, you can enter into his throne room, what? Boldly. Not cocky, but with confidence. We can enter the throne room boldly and let our requests be made known to God. What a privilege that is. It's only because of resurrection power. Because of resurrection, I can go directly to him through the son who makes intercession for me because he is alive and seated at the right hand of the father. We practice praise because of resurrection. We pursue his presence because of resurrection. We push back anxiety because of resurrection. We pray because of resurrection and we prove his promise when we do those things. You know what his promise is? If you'll do those things, then the peace of God, which passes all understanding, he'll begin to work through you and for you in ways that you'll step back and say, I could have never fixed that on my own. I could have never changed that on my own. There's no counselor that could have helped our marriage without him doing that. There's no doctor that could have done this for me. There'll be no explanation. He'll, he'll move, be, move you beyond your understanding. He'll guard your hearts and your minds. He'll keep you from going crazy. He'll bring stability to you when you practice these principles, he says. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind through. Is he alive? Through Christ Jesus. Resurrection is so much more than just an Easter Sunday. Resurrection lives on because Jesus lives on. Resurrection power is still just as available to me today as it was last Sunday. Resurrection power is just as available to me in the now as it was yesterday. I don't have to wait for Easter. I don't have to wait for a, a, big, a big program. I can know that tomorrow when I get up, resurrection power is available to me. So we prove his promise. Finally, because of all of this, he says, we can ponder good thoughts. You say, Pastor, I can't help it. I can't help thinking these things. You have no idea what I've been through. You have no idea of the pain or the disappointment or the rejection. You know what? I don't but I know one who does. And I can unequivocally tell you that there's nothing that you're going through that he hasn't been through. You say, Pastor, I've been abused. Let me introduce you to one who's been abused. Pastor, I need reconciliation in this relationship. Let me introduce you to one who demonstrated he can reconcile broken relationships with mankind. Pastor, I need peace. Let me introduce you to the peacemaker who was suspended between heaven and earth in order to bring peace between God the Father and his creation. You say, Pastor, I need deliverance. Let me introduce you to one who was delivered from death. You say, Pastor, I need help. Let me introduce you to a helper. You say, Pastor, I need, I need restoration. Let me introduce you to one who restores people because he was physically restored. You say, Pastor, I need an overcomer. Let me introduce you to one who overcame through death, hell, and the grave. You say, oh, let's give him praise. Come on, let's give him praise. He's all of that and more. We ponder good thoughts. I can't help my stinking thinking. Yes, you can. It's in a, an imperative. It says, finally, finally, as you practice these five, six things, finally, finally, think on these things. Take control of your thinker. You say, I can't think of anything good. Let me introduce you to Jesus because that whole list there that you find in that passage, all those lovely things, things of good report, if you can't think of anything that on that list that's good in your life, think of Jesus. He fits the litany test. He fulfills all of them. 
So when you can't think of anything else, think of one that loves you, that cares for you, that provides hope for you, that provides power for you, that provides eternal life for you, that provides peace for you, that provides healing for you and restoration for you. That's my Jesus. He's alive. So much more to this than big Easter celebrations. When I'm alone and worried about a child, a grandchild, or carrying things when you went through three accidents in the last few weeks, and let me just say it wasn't Ginger's driving. She said she was innocent, but her family... You add into that the death of a father. In all of that, there's still a peace. Because he resurrected. There's still sustainable thinking. There's still a confidence. The promises of God still stand true because of his resurrection. Because of his resurrection. It means everything. In weeks to come, we're going to talk about the fact that it matters what we believe. It matters what we believe. Because it's in those times when there's no music playing and there's no buddy with you. And you're in the midnight hour. It's in those times it really matters what you believe. And one of our core beliefs is Jesus got up out of the grave and for 40 days after the resurrection he made 10 appearances and those appearances were designed to let the world know I've come back I'm no longer in the grave I've come back I've got you I'm going to take care of you I may leave but I'm going to send a comforter and I've got you and I will return resurrection is everything everything Do you believe? Do you really believe? Thomas struggled with it, didn't he? One of those 10 appearances was to a guy who had a faith crisis. Remember having a faith crisis as a 17 year old kid, laying at bed at night, not being able to sleep, wondering is what my parents taught me really real? But then I had an encounter with God. I discovered the word. I discovered him to be true. And I've discovered him to be faithful. Has anybody else in this room discovered that? Here's what I want us to do. We wouldn't be able to approach the table without his resurrection. He's invited us to come and share in his story of death, burial, and resurrection. So this morning we want to come and I want you to position your heart to where you can be thankful and grateful for his death, the death, the body that was sacrificed for the cup, the blood that was shed for you and I. Could you find gratefulness in your heart? And then we're going to look forward to a soon return. I don't know about you that this world seems to be getting crazy. I can't say when he's going to return. I'd kind of like it to be soon. Is anybody else here kind of like that? I would love it to be soon. Could, could we give him a hand clap and welcome him? We, we want him to come. Come, come, come. So, if you'll stand with me, if you take the middle aisle, you that are on this side of the middle aisle, move to your, I guess it'd be your left, to the nearest aisle on your left. Tables are designed on this side. Move to your right, to your nearest aisle. Tables are here to serve you. You'll go back to your seat if you're in the stadium seating. Our elders will dismiss you. You can come. Let's worship the Lord.
able to come to the table. We want everybody to have an opportunity to participate. And, um, we have elders, and ushers that would be happy to serve you. Would you just slip a hand up and they'll make sure you get served before we begin to partake together. Yes. Yes. Wait just a moment. The Lord's presence is in this place. Amen. Shoo. Lord, just do a deep work in us. Do a good work. Amen. Amen, amen. All right. I believe all have been served. In the words of Jesus, the Apostle Paul repeating those words, he said, do this in remembrance of me. Don't forget the sacrifice I've made. Don't forget the price I paid. Don't forget it. And he said, do it often often tell the story not because of his ego but because he wanted all of mankind to know the story it's their gate into eternal life so remember it tell it often you can't wear it out remember do this often in remembrance of me. So understanding that tells me there's a past significance when it comes to the Lord's table. We remember the past. We remembered it last week during that season we called Holy Week, Friday night. We worked through the passion with powerful music. We remembered we're to remember. So as you hold the bread, I hope that you'll remember that there's this tremendous past significance, the sacrifice, the body that was broken, abused, and beaten. A horrendous price was paid. But as we hold the bread, we also know it has a present significance because he didn't stay in the grave. He got up on the third day. And the present significance is this. He is now in bodily form, seated at the right hand of the Father. In a position of authority, thinking it not robbery to be equal with God. He was God in the flesh. And he intercedes on our behalf. When Pastor Rob led us in prayer this morning, there's a Jesus that's leading over to the Father and saying, 
Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Father, take care of this. Take care of this. So and so down there has got a big need. Let's take care of this. He advocates. He intercedes. He pushes for you. But there's also a future significance as you hold this bread. He says that he will return in bodily form. He tells his disciples, just as you see me leaving, so will I come again. I've already stated this. I don't know when the return will take place, but I kind of feel like it's a good time to start looking to the eastern sky. We have hope in a world that feels so hopeless. Whether the Democrats are in charge or the Republicans are in charge, they're not in charge. God's in charge. He's got this. Whether or not we see this slipping away or that slipping, should we be concerned? Yes. We serve a God bigger than all of that. When he comes back, he's not coming back to be bruised or beaten or abused again. He's coming back reigning. Renee sang it. The choir sang it. He's coming back. And when he comes back, he's coming back showing his power, his ability. With thankful hearts, we give thanks and we take the bread. Can you utter a thank you, Lord? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Whisper it if you have to. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. As we take the cup and hold it. Oh, there's a past significance to this as well. Do this in remembrance of me. We remember the shed blood. We remember the horribleness of Good Friday. The blood that was shed. The incredible thing about it is its present application and power that it has today. It keeps reaching. It was good then, and it's good now. People are still being saved. 40 people coming to Christ, including children, is a beautiful thing. The transforming power of Christ. We welcome everybody here. We welcome them, but we expect transformation. We expect order and transformation. And through the power of the cross, and through his resurrection, we can be transformed. We may look the same on the outside, but we're not the same on the inside because of the blood of the lamb that washes us clean as the Holy Spirit applies that blood to our lives by faith. He washes us. In the present, I've told you this before, you say, Pastor, I keep doing what I don't want to do. I, I sinned yesterday, and I keep telling the Lord I'm not going to do it again. And, and I do it over and over and over again. Can I tell you that's where the blood comes in? If you'll keep your will set on the Father, he'll look at you through a blood screen. And when you fail, you need to get yourself back up in the name of Jesus. Don't you give up and stay down. Get back up because the blood is what makes the difference. So that when the Heavenly Father looks at you and I this morning, he sees purity, holiness, and righteousness because he looks at us through a blood screen. It's not your righteousness. Who do you think you are anyway? You can't work your way into this relationship. He did the work. You receive it. And you know what will happen? When you get Jesus working in your life and empowering you, you'll overcome sin. He'll break that cycle in your life as you get more of him and less of you. Has anybody experienced that before? And then there's going to be a new day. It's going to be an amazing day when we'll all sit at the marriage supper of the Lamb and we'll partake of new wine. I said at you, Church of God, Nazarene, holiness people. It's going to be a new wine. I don't know if it'll be fermented or not. I'm having a little fun with you. Don't give me an email on that. Please. But the Bible says we're going to drink of new wine. Wine represents that transforming power of Jesus Christ. It changes 
and we're changed by the blood of the Lamb. So we partake. It's good if you came in here burdened and heavy laden and down. Stop in the name of Jesus. Just stop it. Quit it. Get rid of this thinking, thinking. And know that Jesus got up out of the grave for you. And there's hope for you today. There's hope for your problems. There's hope for your tomorrow. He's got you. Can we celebrate the goodness of the Lord right now? Aren't you thankful for the word this morning? It's really early. You're going to get out early. But I think it would be appropriate for us just to take another moment and really thank the Lord again. We, we've got time, right? We've got, we've got time to just thank the Lord. And maybe, Jacob, if we could just sing the nothing else part of that again as we, as we sing that. But I challenge you this week, maybe even today, to say to someone, happy Resurrection Day. And they'll say, wait, that, that was last week. That was last week. And you say, oh, no, 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 no. It's every day. I, I challenge you, double dog dare you this week, sometime to do that and just see what their response is. The scripture says, always be ready to give an answer for why we have hope. And we have hope. So would you just stand with me and we're going to sing this chorus one more time and just thank the Lord. And then you're dismissed to go out. Don't forget focus tonight. Don't forget all of the things. But nothing else, Lord, is more important you than you. So go this week in the knowledge of the resurrected Savior. You're welcome to worship for a moment. If you would like to pray with an elder, you came in with a heavy need and you really would like for someone to agree with you in prayer or maybe you haven't met this Jesus. Would you come to the front during this time and there will be an elder here to pray with you. You may sing, you may worship, you may go in the love of the Lord Jesus Christ today. I Amen. just want you, nothing else, and nothing else, nothing else.
Just one.